Hey guys, it's Jen from I Create Crafts, and today's video I'm going to show you how to create a wood sign like this with no bleeding using a stencil. And I'm using Oracle 631 as my stencil. So to, in today's video, I'm going to show you how to create a stencil and get no bleeding on your board. So stay tuned, and I will show you step by step how to do this. So I'm starting in design space and I already have created my design so all I need to do is cut it out. I already changed the dimensions of this uh, to the size of my board that I'm going to be using so I changed it to a 15 by 4. You can use any kind of design you want. I'm just using this one because I live on a small homestead and it'll go great with my decor. So all I need to do next is cut this out. But before I do, I just want to tell you that when you use a design like this, you want to make sure you attach it down here, which I already did. So the next thing I'm going to do is just click make it. Then it's going to bring me to this page and it's going to tell me that I need to use my larger mat. So I'm going to click OK, click continue, and I have the maker. So mine might look a little bit different than yours. So I'm going to click this one here. This is my favorite. I added this as my favorite, so I'm going to click on this one really quick. I have my uh, bleed in already, and I'm going to be using Oracle 631, um, so it will easily peel up and not peel my paint uh, from my board. So I'm going to go ahead and do a reverse weed on this, which means I'm going to take out all the lettering and leave the rest behind. So I'll show you what that looks like next. So people ask me how I make my signs and what do I use for a stencil. So I'm going to do a quick video on that. So I cut this out. This is my stencil. This is from Oracle 631. It is not permanent and it's not as sticky. So once you paint your sign, you can put this on and then paint over it and then it will not be as sticky. So it will just come right up and leave your paint on your board. So I figured I would just do a quick tutorial on how I use stencils for my signs. Um, again, the easy part, I just did this in Cricut. I just made it myself um, and I just cut this board out. I just had a scrap piece of board laying around. So I cut this out. I routed the, ed I routed the edges a little bit so it's a little bit smoother. And then I really sanded this nice and smooth um, to the touch, which is what you want when you're going to be using any kind of stencil. So I have a rag here. I'm just going to wipe it off really well and make sure all of the little debris and everything from the sanding is off. And then I'm going to be using this chalk white paint and then also this wood stain. This is called uh, weathered gray. Um, and then the last thing I'm going to have are these, and I just have them in a big container, is these makeup sponges. I bought all this on Amazon. I will leave the link below. So the first thing I'm going to do is take my stain, give it a little bit of a shake, and then just open it up because my bottom base color is going to be this gray stain. And then I'm going to lay my stencil down and then I'm going to color over it. You can do stain, you can do paint, you can do whatever you want, but I thought this would be really pretty as the base color. So this is stain. I'm going to be using just an old rag and then just rubbing it on here. Uh, you can use any paint or anything you want. I love working with stain because you see the, the wood grain behind it. So I love working with stain. I should be wearing gloves, but you know what? I have the kitchen in the other room, so I just use my hands free of gloves. And I'm just gonna get everything. I'm gonna get all the sides, all the top. I like doing the back side as well. Um, just if you wanna sell it or even give it away as a gift, it just looks a lot better. And this stain goes a long way. I still have that little bit on that I put on here, but I'm just gonna make sure I get everywhere. And see, you see that beautiful wood stain underneath it. So I'm just going to continue to keep going. Get a little bit more. And just get that stain in there really well. And then once this is done, I'm going to let it sit and dry for a little while. That is also very important when you are going to be working with a stencil or even just applying vinyl to it itself is you want to make sure it is completely, completely dry. So I'm just going to do the back side and then I'll let this sit probably, you know, to be honest with you, probably overnight to let this dry 100%. You can wait a couple of hours if you want, but I think I'm actually going to let this sit 
overnight and dry completely. I like to let my board sit for a couple of hours to a couple of days, depending on what I'm using. So I'm gonna finish this stain up here. And you can always go back and add more to it if you want, but it was that simple. So I'm just gonna wipe off the extra that's on here and make sure I get all the sides. You can always go back and take your sander and kind of like sand off the edges to give it like a rustic look to it, but I like how it looks this way. So I'm just gonna let this sit, like I said, overnight, let the stain really seep into the wood. And then tomorrow when I come back, I will show you how to use this stencil or this vinyl to stick onto here and then paint over it and that's where the reverse weed comes in. So I reverse weeded all of this. I took all of my letters out and I left the vinyl behind. So I'm gonna let this dry and then I'll come back tomorrow and then I'll show you the next step. But I'm just gonna let this kind of sit up higher on something so both sides dry. So I'll come back tomorrow and I'll show you the next step. All right, so I'm finished with my board. I let it dry overnight so it's nice and dry on both sides. I don't have to worry about any seeping or any of the stain getting onto my uh, file and here is my file and I made it a little bit larger than my wood board just because when painting this it's a little bit difficult trying to get these little spots so I just made it a little bit larger than my board um, so the next part I'm gonna do is just take my transfer tape I have this huge roll that I bought from Amazon and I'm just gonna carefully put it over unfortunately I won't put it that way I'm going to put it over this. I like to smooth it out as I go along to make sure I don't get any bubbling in it. I'm just going to take my scissors, cut along. And I like to save my transfer tape, so I'm just going to cut the excess off really quick. I'm going to use my scraper and I'm going to scrape really well to make sure that the transfer tape sticks to my vinyl. And it also gets any air bubbles out that you might have in it. Oh, and like I said before, I reverse weeded it so I took out the letters instead of peeling back the vinyl. So I always like to put my project upside down and kind of work backwards to see if anything is coming off like that and then I can just go back in and push it in before I pull it too far. Perfect. So I'm going to take my board. You want to figure out which side you want to do it like upside down or whatever. I have this little crack right here so I think I'm going to leave that one at the top. And then I'm just going to take my trans or my vinyl and line it up really well and this is where it also comes in handy I made the vinyl the same width as it so it's all the same around the edges I just need to line up the side parts really well make sure I'm not going over too far and I should have made it the same size as my board but I just made it a little bit larger but I'm just checking all the dimensions before I lay this down making sure the sides here are pretty equal and once you get it you just want to push it down with your fingers and then take your squeegee again and push everything in and this is where I take my time because I want all of this to stick to the wood so I'm pushing really hard kind of a circular motion just to make sure that all these letters are down and going into the wood. So once you think you've got it on, you just want to take your transfer tape and peel it back. There, so I took my transfer tape off and I'm just going to fix any spots that I see that have bubbles in it. Kind of work them out with my fingers. 
And then I'll go back in with my squeegee and rub it down really well because you want to make sure that your letters or your lack of letters, I should say, are pushed down really well so that when you put your paint on, it's not going to seep through underneath. So you want to take your time with this. So when I'm using this, when I'm using a stencil for paint, I normally go over it with the same color paint as the background. Um, I haven't really done that with stain yet, so I'm not sure if that would work. Um, it's your preference if you want to go ahead and try to do that, but I'm just going to push down all my letters really well and make sure there's no bubbling or anything. And then just go with my white paint. But I'm going to take my scraper one last time and kind of make sure that everything is down really well because you don't want any seeping through any paint. <clears throat> So there, so once you think you got it on, I like to use these makeup blenders and then just use the backside of it and dab it on here. I'm gonna do probably two to three coats of the white paint on here, just because you don't wanna go on thick. You don't want any possibility of it going behind your letters. So again, I'm just gonna be using this linen white here. I'm gonna give it a good shake. I'll open it up. And because I'm not using too much, I'm not gonna waste it and put it onto um, a paper plate or anything. I'm just gonna take the lid part and then carefully dab on here. I'm gonna use a paper towel too and kind of dab off a little bit and then just go on here, just up and down motion, not putting a lot on. I don't want it to seep through is the main point. So I'm just, lightly dabbing on here and again I'm going to do a couple coats so it'll get darker as it goes along but the whole point is using a stencil you don't want your paint to go through. Okay so I'm done with my first layer as you can see it's not on there very dark but again I'm going to go over it at least two or three more times and make it a little bit thicker and so I'm going to let this layer dry and because I'm using chalk paint chalk paint dries a lot faster than acrylic so this will just take a couple of minutes to dry I'll go over it again one or two more times and then I'll show you peeling it up and you should have no problem with having bleeding underneath using your stencil. All right, so I put three layers of paint on here with the same process, just the beauty blender, and then just up and down strokes. I'm not going back and forth. I'm just going lightly up and down. That's why it took me about three coats to put on here. So after the third coat, it's still a little bit wet, but I'm going to peel it up, and this is the fun part that hopefully you see your project come to life. So I'm going to make sure I don't have any paint on my fingers, and I'm just going to pull this up slowly, making sure I'm not going to touch it anywhere with the wet paint and then you can just go back with your weeding tool and get all the other little pieces out that are left behind. I am just trying to go somewhere where it doesn't have wet paint and this is where the 631 comes in handy because it is not permanent it comes up a lot easier. So I'm just going to check my hands again and just peel some more. It's better to peel this when it is still wet rather than when it's dry. It just makes it a little bit easier to peel up. Beautiful. This turned out awesome so far. There's absolutely no bleeding anywhere. So I'm just going to take my weeding tool and then carefully peel up these extra pieces. Being careful of not to touch any of the wet paint anywhere. And I love, love, love these weeding tools. I bought these from Harbor Freight. I think there were six of them. And it was like $2. And it's so much cheaper than the Cricut brand. If you watch my videos, I don't buy a lot of the Cricut stuff. I get all the off-brand stuff and it works just as good. So I'm just going in and picking off these little pieces on here. I'm trying to be very careful not to spread paint. If you have a tweezers, this part would come in handy as well. 
And I'm just cleaning my little tool up every time I grab a new piece so I don't spread any of the paint in there. I love this, guys. I think it turned out absolutely amazing. There's no bleeding on it whatsoever. Just take your time and patience with this stuff and it will work out for you perfectly. I love how it turned out. What do you guys think? So again, a recap, I sanded my board. I stained it with this bottom color. I used Oracle 631, it's a non-permanent vinyl. I put it on and then I painted over it with some Makeup Beauty blenders. I really hope you like this tutorial. Please give me a thumbs up if you did and leave any comments or questions below. I love to hear from you guys. Have a great day and happy crafting everyone!